Transit Arts. Hello inventors! Today we're going to learn how to make these flowers. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have already prepared three of these squares here and I can go ahead and fold them diagonally here. When I'm folding it, I'm lining up this edge to the other edge where I'm going to fold. And then once I have that, I'm holding it down there so that the edge stays lined up. I'm pressing down on the other side. It's sort of like that. Again, when I fold, matching the edges, holding that once I've matched, holding that down. And now, to press the line down. A nice little fold. So from there you can kind of pinch this paper until I have it in this sort of a shape. And I can go in with whatever color I want. I'm going to try going with blue here on the outside. My recommendation would be to grab another piece of paper so that you can go right up to the edge and not color on the table. Pro tip. The cool thing about this paper is that it's glossy. So the marker can sort of slide on it a little bit. Give this kind of a cool Rip effect. I just color it, and as soon as I color it, before the marker dries, I'm sort of dragging it into the center. I think that's a really, really neat effect. And you can see that happen in a couple of flowers in nature. They have these sort of streaks that go in from the outside of the flower into the inside. And I'm not sure exactly why that happens, but I believe it's because the flower, at the center of the flower, there's such a thing called nectar and pollen. And the reason why it has these sort of guidelines going to the center of the flower is because it wants honeys, honeybees, to go collect what's inside there, the nectar and the pot, while it gets the pollen all over the bees. And when the bee flies to another flower, it will pollinate that flower with the same pollen of this flower. And they'll, they'll spread flowers that way. So that's kind of a neat fact there. We've got this little flower, and but this side's blank, and I'd like to sort of try and give it a, a little bit of an edge here. So I'm going to go across the edge, and on the outside edge, I don't want to smear it. So what I have to do is be very, very mindful, be very, very careful, and not touch the marker until it is dry. And this might take a while, so I have to be very patient and very careful. Here I go. And you can see this hand is very aware of where the marker is. is. And I'm trying very hard not to get my hand onto any of the wet marker. So I'll take this and I'll sort of just set it aside and wait for it to dry. And then I'm going to take another one of these squares, give the little fold again, lining it up, holding it down, lining, and then pressing along the edge. Lining up these edges here, holding it down so it doesn't move too much, and then pressing down. Sometimes you'll have to switch hands, 
pressing down that edge. And we'll do that a couple more times here. Because the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a smaller flower to go inside of that flower. So I think that's pretty neat. And I'd like to see what you guys can come up with. What color combinations you want to use. What sort of colorful combinations. So I have blue. Now I could try and go with the red, which is a warm color. Or I could hit it up with a green or a purple, which are both cool colors. And what I want to go with I think is another cool color. Very cool. Here we are. <laughs> we got a purple and I'm gonna try and do the same little method here. Really load it up. And try and bring in the ink a little bit. If I didn't quite get it, I'll put a little more ink and really load it up so that I can smear it towards the center. I really like the effect and if you end up getting a little bit into the center it's not the end of the world. So you can hardly tell. I have a little dot here but you won't really be able to, to notice unless you're looking very 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 carefully. In which case you'll feel like very special because you've noticed something that maybe you didn't at the first glance. You say, hey, that flower has a mistake. Someone didn't, uh, didn't have control over their marker. But for the most part, no one's gonna notice and no one's gonna care. So I have that little bit done here. I'm gonna fold this diagonally because I forgot to do that earlier and then do this little trick where I fold all four of those corners at the same time and on the outside edge here maybe I want to be a little more creative purple on the outside maybe I want to have red on, on the inside outside here encourage you all to just just uh, experiment with the colors you know see see what kind of color combinations you want to do and sort of have fun with it now, if you wanted to you know you can go in with, with an orange right into that right into that red or a green, who knows? Try and explore different color combinations. So, we have that here. And we've got this one. And again, I'm gonna try and Cut just a little bit of the corner there, just the tiniest little bit. Then I can grab this here. Fold it in half. Rip it. that in half and I'll sort of have myself a little bit of a stem here. Now it might be too big so I might have to cut this one in half and I just do it with the scissors. It's a little messy but that's okay because these stems they don't need to necessarily be very very tidy. They can sort of they can be messy. I'm 
give them a little bit more of a natural look, a little more alive, I think. But again, if you want to have a really neat looking stem, you can always be very, very extra careful. And if you mess up, you can always fold in the jagged edge into the center so that no one can see it. And then you have yourself a very, very clean, straight line. If you're going for that look, me personally, I kind of like the look of this. So I'm going to take that, sort of give it a twirl, make the paper thin enough to be able to fit through this tiny little hole here. And I can sort of swirl it around to make sure it goes in there. I'm gonna put this other one in here. This other smaller flower kind of push in from the center. And then I have a sort of a two-part flower. I can make it rotate a little bit if I want. I think that is super duper cool. If you want to get really crazy with it, there's nothing really stopping you from making a bunch of different layered flowers. Imagine, maybe 10, 20 flowers you stack up. The repetition can be really impressive, where something like this might not be terribly impressive. Once you do it four times over, it kind of looks a little neater. Oops! <laughs> All these flowers are sort of falling off. Made them a little bit too big. So it has a little bit more of a neat effect if you have a bunch of different uh, repetitions of the same shape. All right, thank you very much for watching. Inventors, we look forward to seeing all your beautiful flowers and seeing what you come up with. Transit Arts.